In this video, we're going to actually talk about what we call rational exponents. Rational exponents. Now, we've discussed what rational means. It's, it's basically anything that can be written as a fraction. So some, some people call this fractional exponents. But um, we're going to extend our knowledge of exponents, apply all of our concepts that we've learned before dealing with exponents to um, radical expressions. All right. So I have a to the one over n. This is the exact same thing as saying the nth root of a. All right. This denominator, right? We got a denominator. Whatever is the denominator on your fraction is your index on the radical. All right, so if that's 2, what a to the 1 over n or a 1 over 2, then that's square root. If it's a to the 1 third, then we have a cube root, so on and so forth. Sometimes there's going to be a number other than 1 in your exponent. For instance, we have an a to the m over n. This is equivalent to saying the nth root of a to the m power, right? Again, your denominator is your index. Your numerator is your exponent. And that's going to be your exponent under the radical, all right? So notice where these things are located, right? m was in your numerator on your fractional exponent. It became your exponent under the radical. Now, there's actually another way that you can write this here. It's the same thing as saying the nth root of just a, and then at the end, you raise everything to the m power, all right? And so that m is still an exponent, but it can either be the exponent on the inside of the radical or on the outside of your radical, all right? So let's look at a couple of examples of working with this. All right, it says rewrite as a radical expression and simplify as if possible. All variables represent nine negative real numbers. So that just is just letting us know that when we simplify, we don't have to worry about uh, absolute values. All right, in this first example, I have x to the one over two. Notice, this is my index. And so this is gonna be the same thing as saying the square root, I don't have to put the two there, of x, all right? So I just want you to get used to going from fractional to radical, right? We're gonna go from a fractional exponent expression to a radical expression. All right, let's look at part B, x to the 3 fourths. Well, 4 is going to be my index. 3 is going to be my power. All right, so I can write this as the fourth root of x to the third. All right, or I can write it as the fourth root of x to the third power, all right? This is more simplified. I know I'm squeezing that in there. Sometimes we use this method if we're going to be doing some extra work after we change it from fractional exponents to uh, a radical expression. All right. But I like to leave my final answer in this form right here. It's most simplified. This is for me to do more work with. All right. Let's look at some other examples, including values. All right. In part C, we have 37, sorry, 36 to the one half power. All right, well, two is my index. I have a one, so this is gonna be the same thing as the square root of 36, and the square root of 36 is six. So we actually can simplify these down quite a bit. Let's look at part D, 64 to the one third power. Well, this is gonna be the same thing as the cube root. My index is three, that's in the denominator of my fractional exponent here. Um, so I get the cube root of 64, and what do I multiply three times by itself? To get 64, that lucky number is 4. All right? Let's look at some other examples. I have x to the 32, y to the 4th, z to the 24th. All of that is in parentheses raised to the 1 4th power. All right? And so when I do this type of example, okay, when I do this type of example, I'm going to change it to a radical expression, right? My index is going to be 4. That's in my denominator. So I'm going to have the fourth root of x to the 32nd, y to the 4th, z to the 24th. 
All right, again, I'm assuming my variables represent nine negative numbers. Since my index is four, for me to simplify this, all right, I'm looking for what I multiply four times to get x to the 32nd, y to the 4th, z to the 24th. Well, all I have to do is divide these exponents by four since we are, we are dealing with variable expressions. So I get x to the 8th, y to the 1st power, which is just y, times z to the 6th. 4 goes into 24 six times. Don't have to worry about absolute values. My variables represent nine negative real numbers. And I'm done. All right, let's look at one more example. All right, part F, we have 4x to the 16th, y to the 32nd, z to the 24th. And we're raising that to the 5 halves power, all right? Well, what I'm going to do first, now this is one of those cases. I know that when we have a to the m over n, there's two ways to write this. I'm going to write this as the square root of 4x to the 16th, y to the 32nd, z to the 24th. And I'm actually going to wait to raise everything to the fifth power, right? Two is my index, five is my power, my exponent. And I'm gonna wait to the end to raise everything to the fifth power because if I do it on the inside, then I have to raise four to the fifth power, x to the 16th to the fifth power, y to the 32nd to the fifth power, and z to the 24th to the fifth power. That means I'm gonna have a lot of huge numbers that I'm gonna eventually have to take the square root of. And so what I'm gonna do is take the square root first and then raise it to the fifth power and hopefully it'll be a little bit easier. All right, so let's work inside these parentheses. Well, four is a perfect square, the square root of four is two. All right, my index is two sitting out here, right? So if I divide 16 by two, I get eight. So square root of x to the 16th is x to the eighth. We get y to the 16th, z to the 12th. And everything is still raised to the fifth power. We're actually going to do a review of um, rules of exponents, but when I see this fifth power here, I have to raise everything to the fifth power. So I'm going to have 2 to the fifth power, x to the eighth to the fifth power, y to the sixteenth to the fifth power, z to the twelfth to the fifth power. 2 to the fifth power is 32. When you raise an exponent to an exponent, you multiply. So that's going to be x to the fortieth, y to the eightieth, z to the 60th. Again, don't have to worry about any parenthesis uh, absolute values. Even if it didn't say, assume my variables are non-negative, I know that 40, 80, and 60 are even numbers, and so I wouldn't have to use absolute values anyway. All right? But that's a good look at using these rules of exponents that we have here. All right? Let's go ahead and do a, a more... Um, a more inclusive review of our rules of exponents, all right? It says for any basis x and y, right? When we have exponents, right? Our base is the big number. Our exponent is our superscript, right? So x and y are our bases. Our exponents are integers, or they may be fractions or real numbers, all right? If I have my bases, are, my bases are the same and I'm multiplying, then I can simplify by just adding my exponents together. All right, if I have a power raised to a power, then I can multiply my exponents. All right, so note the difference here. Bases are the same, you add the exponents. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. All right, I have a product that I'm taking the power or the exponent of, since that's multiplication in the middle, right? So I can raise everything in that parentheses, in parentheses to the n power, all right? I have a division. Right? When I, my bases are the same and I divide, I subtract my exponents. All right, so that would be x to the m minus n. When I raise an exponent uh, base to the exponent 0, it's going to be 1. All right? And this is assuming that x is not 0. All right? I can't have 0 to the 0 power that is undefined. x over y, so I have a quotient... All right, that I raise into a power. I have a division here. That's going to be x to the n over y to the n. All right. Notice these two distributing sort of looking things, right? It's not really the distributive property per se, but it's almost like distributing, right? We can only distribute if there's a multiplication or a division, right? Multiplication or division. All right. It doesn't work for addition and subtraction. Right? We never do x plus y to the fifth power 
as x to the fifth plus y to the fifth, right? It has to be a multiplication or a division. All right, let's continue with our rules of exponents. x to the 1 over n, this is our reciprocal rule. It's 1 over x to the n. And last but not least, 1 over x to the negative n power is another reciprocal rule, right? And basically with these two here, you just move your exponent across the fraction sign in order to get your, your solution. Do the reciprocal, right? So this is x to the negative n over 1, right? So I flip it. And I make my or move this x to the n over negative n to the, over to my fraction symbol to make that exponent positive. All right, so we're looking at some examples where we actually use these rules. All right, it says use the rules of exponents to simplify. Assume all variables represent nine negative real numbers. Our first example is x to the thirty fourth times x to the one fifth. All right. Well, bases are the same. We're multiplying, so we can do an addition to these exponents here. All right, three-fourths plus one-fifth, right? You can get a common denominator, right? Common denominator would be 20. In order for me to get a 20 of, for this three-fourths, I have to multiply the four and the three by five, so I get 15 over 20. In order to get me a 20 in the denominator for this one-fifth, I have to multiply the five and the one by four, so I get x to the 15 over 20 plus four over 20. And if we combine those terms, we get 19 over 20. Okay, and so this would be my final answer. Part B, we're raising the power to a power. And so when we're raising the power to a power, we can multiply those exponents. Okay, the only two factors, numerator and denominator, have common factors are 4 and 10. They have a common factor of 2. 2 goes into 4 2 times, 2 goes into 5, uh, 10 5 times. And so I'm going to get x to the 14th over 45. And that's most simplified. Some other examples. Here we have a division. The bases are the same and we're doing division. And so what we can do with those exponents is to divide them. Well, we're dividing our powers, but we subtract the exponents. So we have 7 eighths minus 3 fourths as our exponent. Of course, we can simplify that. All right, I'm going to get a common denominator, which is 8. 4 times 2 is 8, 3 times 2 is 6, and so I'm going to end up with x to the 1 over 8. So we get x to the 1 eighth. Last but not least, we have 32 to the negative 1 fifth, right? We want to simplify this, and I'm going to try to use as many rules of exponents as I can. Well, since I have a negative exponent, in order to make that exponent positive, I need to put it in the denominator, do the reciprocal. So it's going to be 1 over 32 to the 1 fifth. And in order for me to kind of simplify this a little bit further, right, 1 fifth is the same thing as the fifth root. So this is going to be the fifth root of 32. And what I'm looking for is numbers such that if I multiply it five times by itself, I get 32. Well, that lucky number is 2. So my final answer would be 1 half. So those rules of exponents really allow us to simplify more and more things, all right? For example, this is an example, right? This example right here is an example where we're doing, we're simplifying where we don't have the same index, all right? I could have easily given you this problem as the eighth root of x to the seventh over the fourth, uh, fourth root of x to the third. All right, same thing. If I want to simplify this expression into one single radical, then I have to change it to fractional exponents and then use my property of exponents to simplify it down to get it into one single radical, all right? And let's do more examples of stuff that's just like that, all right? It says to rewrite with rational exponents, Simplify if possible and assume, and assume that all variables represent nine negative real numbers. Okay. Have the fourth root of x times the fifth root of x. Now there is a rule that says if I have the nth root of a times the nth root of b, then and they're real numbers, then I can rewrite this as the nth root of a b, a times b. But the key to using this rule is to understand 
that the indices or the indexes have to be exactly the same. In this example here, they're not. And so the instructions kind of gave you a hint. We're going to rewrite using rational exponents and then simplify, right? So x to the one fourth is the same. Sorry, the fourth root of x is the same thing as x to the one fourth. And the fifth root of x is the same thing as x to the one fifth. And so I have multiplication between these. I have two bases that are the same. And so I can rewrite this as x to the one fourth plus one fifth. With that being said, I can get a common denominator, right? My common denominator in this case would be 20, right? One fourth is the same thing as five over 20. And one fifth is the same thing as four over 20. And so if I can continue to simplify, I get x to the 9 over 20. Now, I would normally start here, but since I started in radical notation, I'm going to write my answer in radical notation. So I'm going to convert it back to a rational or radical expression, right? My index is going to be not, uh, 20. So I'm going to have the 20th root, and my exponent under the radical is going to be 9. So the 20th root of x to the 9th. That would be my solution. All right, let's look at this last example for this video here. I have the fourth root of m over the 12th root of m. Again, I'm going to change this to be in radical notation, or fractional exponent notation, right? Fourth root of m is m to the 1 fourth. 12th root of m is m to the 1 12th, 1 over 12. And so if I look, my bases are the same, so I can actually subtract my exponents. I'm going to have 1 fourth minus 1 twelfth. All right. And for me to simplify that, I got to get a common denominator, which is 12. 4 is the same thing as 3 over 12, right? 4 times 3, 1 times 3. And if I simplify that, I'm going to have m to the 2 over 12. And that's a fraction that can actually simplify to 1 sixth. And so, of course, since I started as a radical expression, I'm going to leave my answer as a radical expression. So this is going to be the sixth root of m. And this concludes our video on ra uh, fractional exponents, rational exponents.